okay, great, the time is 7.30 p.m. So I will call this February 16th meeting of the Yardley Borough Council to order. Please join me in saying the Pledge of Allegiance to our flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Marianne, if you could do our roll call. Ms. Thompson? Here. Ms. Siegel Morris? Here. Mr. Ross? Here. Mr. Feiner? Here. Mr. McCann? Here. Mr. Curtin? Present. Mr. Brea? Here. Thank you. Thank you. Seven council members are in attendance, which constitutes the quorum. We are also joined by Mayor Harding this evening. First item on our agenda is community announcements. This is the portion of the meeting during which um, members of council may share items for the public good. So if any council member has something they'd like to share, please unmute yourself and do so now. All right, and hearing none, the same offer stands for the public. If any member of the public has an item for the public good they would like to share, please use the raise hand function to be acknowledged. All right. Seeing none, we will move on to the next portion of the meeting. I will, however, add that with all of the inclement weather, weather that we've been experiencing and will experience, please stay tuned to the Yardley Borough social media accounts for um, any updates regarding rose closures, parking restrictions, or anything else that might be a result of the winter weather we've been experiencing. Next on our agenda is public comment. This is the portion of the meeting during which members of the public may address council regarding items that do not appear on the agenda. If you wish to address council regarding an item that does appear on the agenda, you will be given an opportunity to do so during council's deliberation of that business item. Members of the public are asked to please state their full name and address for the record. And to be acknowledged, again, please utilize that raise hand feature. So any public comment this evening? I don't see any Let's raised see. hand feature. <laughs> well, I know that you want to go, Jerry. So if uh, you want to go first, I'll acknowledge you. Um, and your three minutes starts now. Thank you. My name's Jerry Taylor, 35 Lookover Lane in Yardley. I am uh, also chairman of the Historic Architectural Review Board. And <clears throat> I had some general uh, questions. Uh, and I think the application that I'll be referring to is going to come up before council. So this is like a different aspect of it. So I think that application should go through as it normally does. So my first question, when HARB receives an application, the borough zoning officer, and when applicable, the building inspectors are to sign off on the application. When HARB receives an application, can HARB rely on the receipt of the application that the borough code i.e. the zoning ordinance has been complied with? My first question, or don't you answer? Uh, why don't you read all the questions first and then I can cycle back on them. Okay, does HARB and the public have access to that decision, the zoning officer's decision? And three, in reference to 19 South Main Street, HARB was told that as far as HARB was concerned, the application complied with the zoning. I'm assuming that meant building setback lines, et cetera. This is not how I read the application. What was the decision of the zoning officer regarding parking? In accordance with my calculations, the property requires 51 parking spaces, and that's just roughing, rough estimates, including the proposed addition, and the site plan includes 17 parking spaces. All right, thanks. I will take those one at a time. If I miss anything, please stop me so I can uh, circle back to it. Um, so I think your first question was, can HARB rely on, um, on the, the application or what's coming from the zoning official? So you know, the answer there is going to be yes, of course. Uh, if you're receiving an item that has been signed off on, that uh, means it has been reviewed by our zoning officer. Um, and the second part of that was, does HARB and the public have access to that? Um, you know, each document's a little bit different, but generally speaking, 
once these documents are completed, they go into the building file. Um, they are documents that could be obtained through a right to know request. So yes, I would say you do have access. Um, certainly HARB being one of the boards and commissions for Yarder Borough does not need to go through the formal process of a right to know request. Um, I think sufficient to say that the board could just ask Paula for the relevant information and then it would be uh, provided to you. Um, as with all documents, I like to issue the caveat um, that documents that are drafts or work in progress are not always publicly available. It's generally when those documents are final is when they become public and available. Um, and with your last question, um, I did check our historic uh, architecture ordinance, the HARB ordinance. Um, and there is a line in there that does discuss limiting the scope of HARB to um, you know, the issues in the historic district, which uh, I forget the exact wording, I believe it relates to historic character. Um, so I see two solicitors on the call here. So jump in if I'm wrong on this, but I, I do believe right, the scope of HARB is generally related to those historic mm -hmm. aspects of the architecture and not to other zoning issues such as parking. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's correct. I mean, the, the HARB ordinance is, is pretty specific as to what the role uh, of HARB is, and it's, you know, really not to, um, you know, become uh, enmeshed in, uh, in zoning questions per se. Okay. So as a public person, then I can get that information, right? But I have to go through the right sunshine law and all that stuff to get the information, or is it going to be available to the public? In other words, is well, right to know is the mechanism by which documents are available to the public. Um, you know, when we say file a right to know request, that sounds like a very formal and lengthy process. Um, when you're doing something like this, this was just requesting copies of documents. Um, there's no reason for it to be. It's simply a page from the file. Uh, we do on occasion take longer to fill these requests, but those are generally reserved for lengthy, complicated right to know requests, which would require assembling dozens, if not more documents. Um, or in cases where they involve redactions, we certainly need to take the time to make sure that private information is not disclosed. And, and that should be final, right? When we get the application, the zoning officer should have made all his decisions as far as parking and everything else. Yeah, I, I, I can chime in here. Under uh, Section 11-701, if, if HARB has received a copy of the application, that means that the zoning officer has made their determination uh, in this case with regard to parking. Okay. So is it possible I can get that decision now? Or at some time in the, I mean, you're going to vote on it tonight. I think it'll go through anyway, but uh, can I get that decision? So again, when you say decision um, on the parking, there's not going to be. Issue a, on, go ahead. If you're asking whether there's a there's a formal written decision, this is something that's just within the discretion of the zoning officer to determine whether or not it satisfies the requirements of, of the parking ordinance. Uh, so there there's not going to be a formal written decision, but you should be able to obtain a copy of the application. So in other words, if I, my calculation says they need 51 parking spaces and they have 17, then that's up to the zoning officer to make that decision? It's a, or do they have to follow the zoning ordinance? So Jay, I don't want to get too in the weeds I know. On, on the specifics of this property. Um, you know, certainly, I, and I know we emailed about this prior, you know, 51 equates to a building that's in the neighborhood of 7,600 square feet, which I think the building that's there is, is <laughs> it's not quite that large. You have two buildings. Um, you know, furthermore, I believe there is an agreement um, whereby the office is renting some parking spaces to fulfill. I don't have all the specifics right in front of me. Um, but long story short, if there's a signature on it from our zoning officer, it means that it was reviewed and uh, there was a determination and approval based upon, um, you know, the, the application as it relates to the zoning requirements. Chairman, do you, do you want me to jump in briefly just to sum it up? Sure, if you could give a, a quick 
<laughs> brief one minute yeah. summary here because so, I know that it, it wasn't exactly as straightforward. Right. So we've been working on this with the applicant. We had them restripe the parking lot so we knew exactly what they had to play with space wise. Uh, and then we use the available space inside the buildings. The numbers that Jerry is using to calculate is the, is the gross area. There was a significant amount of deductions within both buildings that reduced that overall area to make it compliant for the exception of the parking agreement and the two spaces that they're, they're gonna be taking care of with the borough. Uh, so in the end, it was, it's compliant and it, it was good. So the zoning ordinance says gross building area, correct? Not net. So it, uh, just to chime I'll, in I'll here. I'll talk to Michael about it. Let's, let's move on. I'll talk to Michael about it. Right. Thanks, Jerry. Right. I appreciate that. Right. Um, other public comment tonight, I see Ms. Perlmutter. Uh, you may unmute yourself and begin your three minutes. Hi, Dawn Perlmutter, 18 West College Avenue, Yardley. Um, I um, just have one, uh, well, after hearing that, I do have a question now about the zoning um, officer's discretion, because as you know, I had an incident here where I went out of town and came back and the zoning officer used his discretion to give my property away. So I think we should really stick to the ordinances. Um, if you're voting on something tonight and I'm hearing that some people get discretion, some, you know, and it's not even in writing, it seems a little arbitrary. And that's been one of the issues that I've been complaining about, the arbitrary and capricious nature of how zoning has been done, where it benefits some people and um, harms other. But that wasn't what I was gonna talk about, but I just thought I'd mention that. And I think it's really important that that be um, in writing prior to that HARB vote. Um, the one thing I, I wanted to ask was on February 4th, approximately 11 a.m., there was an accident on Afton Avenue where I think a person was hit by a car. I didn't see anything about that on Facebook or the um, police page. I was just curious, um, was that a fatality? Um, and what was it related to the light, the crossing there? Or um, I'm not even you know, sure if that was the case at all, but um, I was just wondering why um, that wasn't you know, published anywhere. I think that's kind of an important public safety issue. I don't even know if it was related to maybe the snow um, uh, not being able to walk on the sidewalks, um, but I, I do know that the road was closed for a long time. And um, uh, do you know if that was a pedestrian accident? Thank you. So on all matters of, of you know, communication regarding public safety, I do defer to our chief of police. Um, so I don't know, Chief Kelly, if you have anything to add here, you know, you, you certainly can. If not, we can just move on. Uh, but as a blanket statement, you, you know, this is this is in Chief's Chief's wheelhouse. All I can confirm, sir, is that uh, pedestrian was struck. It was non-fatal. Other than that, it's an active investigation, so I won't comment any further under the provisions of CREA. Thank you, Chief. Can I just add something on that? Because I actually think that Dr. Perlmutter does bring up a point that is uh, uh, really important here, which is that I would like as a member of council to be informed when any time there's a pedestrian hit, a bicycle hit, uh, um, you know, a non-typical motor vehicle accident, I think we need to know about it because we need to know if there are things we need to do to act to prevent that. We live in a very small community. There are kids here you know, we don't want uh, people getting hit because the snow wasn't plowed or whatever without knowing about it. So I just want to make sure that we are informed at these meetings or, or through any other means um, so that we can take action when necessary. Thank you. I think that's something we could, we could certainly start doing. Um, you know, and as Chief alluded to, there are obviously certain items, especially when there's active ongoing investigation um, that would not yeah. be for public disclosure, um, but you know we would always make sure that that is marked clearly in any distribution to council members. And I just had one much. other quick question. 
why have we been having two solicitors at the meetings? Is that for any particular reason? Uh, so Mr. Griffin is our expert in um, a lot of these sort of building subdivision type projects that come up. So when we anticipate that there will be questions there, um, you know, we like to make sure he's present. Mr. Closser, if you have something else to add there, I see you unmuted. Yeah, just to say that we're not uh, billing the borough for two people attending. It's a, <laughs> just wanted to be that, uh, be clear on the record on that. Is it a BOGO? Good to know. Good to know. Thank you. Okay. Council President, could I just jump in one quick second? Sure, go ahead, Mr. Mayor. Just to Ori's concern, Ori, I just wanted to let you know that Chief Kelly obviously uh, communicates all of those incidents to myself, Council President, and the Public Safety Chairperson. Of course, if something elevated to another level, everybody would be notified. But I do want you to know that he is communicating with multiple people in terms of borough um, staff and, and council. Thank you. It's good to know. I don't. I don't question uh, what the chief's doing anyway. I just more just looking for a process, a formal communication that I just want to make sure we know about it. That's all. understood. Because I yeah. don't know that I. I might be late in the chain if I actually get to find <laughs> out about these things. Uh, so thank you. Thank you. Uh, do we have any other public comment this evening? Right, going once. Going twice, I will close the public comment portion of the meeting. Agenda item number six is consideration of the consent agenda dated for tonight, February 16th. There are three items on the consent agenda. Those are approval of the minutes from our February 2nd meeting, approval of the bills list for today, and approval of the certificate of appropriateness, number 20-24, uh, that is for the 19 South Main Street edition. Would any member of council like an item on the consent agenda to be considered separately? I'm hearing none. Is there a motion to approve the consent agenda? Wait, I have a question. Yes. Regarding 19 uh, property, is that just for, are we voting on just the parking space or are we voting on the parking space and the, uh, the addition? So it is the HARB certificate of appropriateness for the building. So that's the portion where it would go through um, the hearing before the heart board um, to make sure that the design meets the standards uh, for historic buildings that we have here in Yardley. Right, and on that um, document, only two of the HARB voted in favor of that. And one there was one abstention and one dissent. So that is correct. Um, you know, and I'll say here, with HARB, um, it is a seven member board. We frequently have fewer than that in attendance. Um, you know, with one abstention, you're now looking at three votes, two would be a majority of that. Um, so that is there to see. Council, of course, has final approval on um, these certificates, but with four members in attendance, uh, a quorum was present for HARB's consideration of this business item. Thank you. So do we have uh, a motion for approval of the consent agenda? So moved. Oh. Is there a second? I'm sorry, I just, uh, I'm sorry to interrupt there. I just had one question about the bills list, which is part of it. Um, just if you could clarify, because it's a big number, the $26,000 um, auto payment, is that, can someone just explain what that is? Yeah, give me just a second to pull up. Thank you. List. It's sideways, so you have to kind of. <laughs> I know, I'm not looking. And if somebody here knows off the top of their head. My guess is that's the one payment per year for two different police vehicles. And I believe no. that is the last payment this year. No, that is, that's for our trash. That's our monthly trash bill. Oh, is that that's Republic? For, yeah, that's for Republic. Okay. Then it's an auto, okay. it's so an it's automatic auto payment, payment every month. Oh, automatic payment, not yeah. auto payment. Okay. Yeah, Got we it. do our, the cars are at the end of, okay. end of the year. That's, okay. that's what that's threw me. I was looking for something. Yeah, that's related. why I was like, wait, I, that sounds a little out of whack. So thank yeah. you very much. And just for some clarification on that, um, we did, uh, it's probably over a year ago now, by resolution, approve automatic payments on some of these recurring things. Things like the electric bill, water bill, the trash bill. 
Um, you know, obviously we still vote on them when we vote on the bills list, but they're not the kind of expenses that council really can say, no, we're not gonna pay that this month. Um, so this, you know, it obviously falls into that category. Yeah, thank, thanks for that. And now, now I know what auto means. Gotcha. All right, so take three. Uh, do we have a motion and a second for approval of the consent agenda? I'll have I will to make the motion. Oh, I'll second. second. All right, so let's just choose. Uh, made by Mr. Feiner, seconded by Ms. Thompson. Uh, we've had a lot of questions already, but I'll ask one more time. Any questions, comments from council? Any questions, comments from the public? Uh, Ms. Perlmutter, I see you, go ahead. Thank you. Um, on the bills list, again, I brought this up at the last meeting. You're voting on things tonight to approve, but it's getting better, better than last time. A lot of them are still being paid prior to your vote. Um, and I did have a question on the selective insurance company, the 10,855, what does that, does that represent employment insurance? What, what insurance does that represent? That's kind of a big payment. And it was also paid on February 3rd. So you're voting on it tonight, but it's already been paid. So just in terms of like, you know, keeping it, you know. Right, so, so again, as I mentioned, certain items are paid before if they are something that, you know, is routine or needs to be, um, you know, so again, those routine bills where we have that resolution before, Certainly in some cases, payroll might fall in between council meetings. Um, you know, we don't really have the option of not paying our employees because of the way the calendar falls. Um, so things like that. And uh, Paul, I saw you unmuted for a second. Do you have handy uh, the details on that payment? It's just our insurance. We, some are paid monthly, some are paid quarterly because our insurance bill is considerable. So we have to spread it out throughout the year. So the insurance for what? For employees or for borough? What? No, this could be public officials. It could be auto. It could be workers' comp. It, it's all of our insurances. And it's that high. It's that. It's that much every quarter. Is ten thousand eight hundred and fifty-five. Yep. Oh, okay. Thank you. Um, just one other thing. Um, again, in terms of this vote for HARB, um, I'm a little confused. So you're saying that the council has the right to override HARB even though there were only two votes in favor of this particular um, issue? Um, I, I'm just a little concerned because again, these zoning uh, special exemptions and special little deals where if you get parking spaces that you make a deal with, but um, it just seems that um, something like that, if it only has two people at HARB, I, the math isn't kind of adding up. I, I don't know how that works. If there's seven people on the board and two or four, it, how, does that mean it goes through? I'm a little confused. Right, so to again review, um, and first, you know, there are not special little deals. Um, uh, I've said this before and I'm gonna say it again, we're not gonna let those sorts of comments fly in this, this space anymore. Um, but as it relates to the hard meeting, right? Four were in attendance, one voted no, one abstained, two voted in favor. Um, so, you know, that is a pass. Um, you know, and again, this is related to the certificate of appropriateness. It's related to the historic architecture of that approval of the expansion, we are not voting on a zoning related matter uh, through the certificate of appropriateness. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Any further questions, comments? Hearing none, all those in favor of approving the consent agenda, please signify by saying aye. 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 Are there any opposed? Any abstentions? I'm hearing now the motion carries seven to zero. Item number seven is update from our chief of police. Chief Kelly, floor is yours. Sorry about that, just finding the unmute, no report, sir. All right, thank you. 
Uh, next item is uh, our manager's report. Ms. Johnson, the floor is yours. As I stated in our general government, our audit is in full swing and I believe it's going to be done sometime soon. Everything is running smoothly with that. Um, and also congratulations to Caroline on the wreath program. That's really going in full swing. People are picking up and bringing back and doing a great job. I think this is gonna give our wreaths another five to seven years of life so we don't have to purchase them. And as President Bria said, we are expecting another snowstorm this week. So please watch social media and our email blast for any kind of announcements for that. But let's just all hope that it goes out to sea or somewhere else. And that's my report for tonight. All right, thank you. Any questions on uh, Manager Johnson's update? Mm -hmm. All right, hearing none. And I think do we have one business item under your report. Oh, yes. And before you, I have resolution 2101, which is a designation of an agent. This is for actually our first part of elevation grants that we are receiving from the 2019 application. And this one is just for a construction, actually a reconstruction of a home. So this is just allowing me to sign papers for the grant. All right, so purely administrative in nature. Uh, yes. Is here a motion to approve resolution 2101? <clears throat> Not all at once. <laughs> all right, I'll make the motion. <laughs> all right, motion is made. Do we hear a second? Second. All right, motion was made by Mr. Ross, seconded by Ms. Thompson for approval of resolution 21-01, designation of agent FMA 2019 uh, for the 2019 mitigation project. Any questions, comments from council? Questions, comments from the public? Uh, I see two hands, Mr. Applebaum, you are first, so mute yourself, go ahead. Actually, this wasn't regarding the resolution. I just had a quick question about the reefs. I'm sorry. Is that okay? Let's uh, let's come back to that then. Okay, no problem. Thank you. And Ms. Perlmutter? Um, yeah, I'm just curious. Why do we need a resolution? Wouldn't the borough manager just typically be allowed to sign for this? I mean, I don't remember doing this before. Unless this is this is always done. This is something that Pima requires for every grant. Oh, okay. So the 2019. Why wasn't it done in 2019? Because we're just receiving it now. Pima oh, okay. and FEMA are a little slow sometimes. Oh, okay. Thanks. All right. Any further comments, questions, discussion on the resolution? I'm right, hearing none. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Are there any opposed? Mm -hmm. Any abstentions? Hearing none, that motion carries seven to zero. Uh, and before we move on there, Mr. Applebaum, if you want to go ahead with your question. Yes, yeah, so sorry. Um, I just wanted to um, uh, ask Paula to get in touch with me. I've been, uh, I've, I've requested reefs and I believe I left a phone message. If, if you just kindly get in touch with me, if there's any left, I'd love to um, follow through on my um, promise to do some. Thank you. Thank you. We will be sure to follow up. All right, that closes the manager's report. So we are on to Mr. Klosser, solicitor's report. Uh, thank you, but uh, we have no report this evening. All right, keeping it easy. Thank you. Uh, Mayor Harding, you are next. Mayor's report. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Real quick, um, just on your calendar, May 5th is this year's Carry the Load event in Yardley Borough. Uh, obviously, we will adhere to any state guidelines or any borough guidelines in terms of COVID practices, uh, and we'll address them as they come up and see where we are at that point. And obviously, also, we'll have much more as we approach the date, but I would hope uh, we could get a bunch of people from council and from the borough to walk with us. We do have a team that's going to try to walk 60 miles, one team. Um, so if anyone from the borough would love to join us, we'd love to have you. So. Uh, the longest we've done is 40 miles, so we're really turning it up to another level this year. But uh, if anyone would like to join us for any part, 
but most especially the 60 miles, we'd love to have you and I'll, I'll have future updates for you. Thank you, Chris. It gets longer and longer every year for you. <laughs> so one day we're just gonna walk to Texas. And just do it. <laughs> All right, thank you. Uh, next, we'll move right into council member reports. Mr. Curtin, you're first. Thank you, no report. Thank you, uh, Mr. Ross. Uh, yes, public works uh, met earlier tonight. We discussed the bridge. Um, that project is moving forward well. Um, we're looking to do all the permit work and get all the submissions for that next week. And then right after we get our permits, which hopefully should be within 30 days, we're gonna send the project out to bid. Um, and then also there was a preliminary discussion for possibly making a grading ordinance. So I'm gonna kind of look at other towns and see what they've done and we'll take it from there and have something for council in between the next couple public works meetings. Thank you, Mr. Ross. Ms. Siegel Morris. You were muted, but no report? <laughs> yes, no, no report. I muted myself instead of unmuting myself. I'm sorry. Thank you. Um, for myself, nothing to report, although I will um, just remind all members of council and um, Mayor Harding is supposed to as well that the um, annual financial disclosures need to be filed at Borough Hall with our manager by, I believe, May 1st. Um, I got one for work and it reminded me that I need to do one here as well. So all of you um, just remind me to get that taken care of and not let it slip past that May deadline. Ms. Thompson. So this might be the last time that I report on floodplain webinars this year, maybe. Um, so we had our second one uh, two weeks ago on Wednesday that um, Councilperson Curtin led on uh, buying and selling the floodplain. I thought it went really well, uh, not as well as tenant as we would have liked. I think there was 11 people on the call, five of which were not helping to lead it. Um, but we recorded it and we'll post it and the viewership um, should, should pick up there. And then our final one is March third at 7 p.m., which will be how to prepare and then return to your property after a flood. Um, Parks and Rec is having an indoor cornhole league um, Tuesdays from 6.30 to 7.30 at the community center. Um, and then they are planning on socially distant smile and 5K this year with staggered start times, which other um, runs have employed uh, pretty successfully. So they're hoping to have those charity events again this year, more details to follow. That's all I have to report. Thank you, Mr. McCann. Uh, I'll just mention from the Mary Yardley Bridge Committee that we met and certainly still fundraising. You can donate at FODC.org and there's actually a tab for the Mary Yardley Bridge Project. And um, as we kind of move forward to the project, we'll be out there trying to do the last bit of fundraising here. Thank you. Great. Thank you. And uh, finally, Mr. Feiner. No report tonight. Thank you. All right. Thank you. That closes our council member reports. We do have a discussion item tonight, and that is a presentation from Experience Yardley. Um, who is taking lead on that? Oh, sorry, if you don't mind, Mr. President. All right, Mr. Applebaum, go ahead. The floor good is evening. yours. Thank you. Um, good evening, everyone. Um, as you may know, I'm the president of Experience Yardley. We're a local nonprofit. Uh, responsible, or have been responsible for putting on Music on Main, Canal Ween. Yardley Restaurant Week, and we um, um, had the uh, mural, uh, you know, greetings from Yardley um, commissioned and painted. And we're in the process of um, not reinventing ourselves, but kind of repositioning uh, during the pandemic, uh, different uh, projects that we can do in lieu of uh, large group events. So we have a new um, project. Um, my suggestion for a name was voted down because I guess it was a little obscene, but uh, it's got to do with ducks. And um, I'd like to introduce the other uh, executive board members if they're all here. Uh, first, I see um, Cindy Fatsis. She is our secretary. She's waving there. And um, I don't know if Heather uh, DiPrado is on the call, but she is our vice president. And 
Uh, Liz um, Young, who is the owner of uh, Commonplace Books, will be giving the presentation on the Yardley Duck Walk. Um, so without further ado, um, Liz, please take it away. And Mr. President, she will be needing to present a PowerPoint presentation. All right, so let me make sure that you are able to do that. There's Liz. Hi. Yes, I, I sent it to Paula also. Is it easier for you have the do you have the deck to present? And I also wanted to mention that Russ um, Sacco is on the line also. He is working with us in the um, Experience Yardley Duck Walk project. Thank you. Paula, I think if you make Liz, a co-host, she'll be able to share her screen. Okay. Can you see that? We can. Yes. Okay, I'm just gonna make it a little bit bigger. Um, and I think I want to do slideshow. To your left, play from start. There you go. OK, so this is about the Yardley Duck Walk. And the tagline is, we have our ducks in a row. The next slide will get into why are we doing this now, or what is our purpose? So as most of you are aware, this group, the Experience Yardley group, developed the project Greetings from Yardley Mural last year in 2020. And the purpose of doing that work then was because we were unable due to COVID-19 to meet and gather. And as a placeholder physical project, we chose to do the Greetings of Yardley Mural that displays the historic and um, very important history and uh, potential destination of Yardley as a river town along the Delaware River. So in, in a, as an extension of that, we have agreed to continue focusing on funding and grants that allow us to plan projects that will be for future gatherings. In other words, placemaker um, projects that enable um, gathering as a community, which we've not been able to do for the past year. We expect that that will be something that as a, um, as a community, we will want to do more of that. So one of the other um, considerations we have is that the pandemic impacts have limited gatherings, of course, and projects that we can take on have to um, limit the hands-on um, engagement of people as well. So this is another reason why we looked at the mural and this duck project, which will have limited, um, I would say, um, community participation. We wanna also continue to generate uh, community engagement and support. So thinking about what projects we could do that are visible and again, engage and um, it assure um, our residents and other visitors that we are a lively engaged community. We also have to think about projects that limit individual exposure to any potential virus spreading activities, of course. So that's why we're thinking about a project called Yardley Duck Walk. So the quick um, synopsis of the duck walk is that we will have mallard shaped temporary fiberglass objects, six of them pla placed in key locations in the borough along the main thoroughfares, meaning Afton and Main Street. We would, um, these locations would be decided by Experience Yardley with input from the borough we would use a juried artist selection process and we would have a program approach 
where each of the phases of the of the project work are um, understood and clearly articulated and agreed upon by the various parties in which have a vested interest, primarily the borough council, borough management, um, potentially the historic group and experience yardly. So some of the milestones that we anticipate is that we gather and, and pull leadership and partnership together, which we've had a few meetings with the various parties and have gone well in terms of alignment on direction and approach. We also have to gather a jury group together so that they can um, weigh the designs and potential uh, painting of the ducks. This group has been um, agreed upon formed. They are waiting for us to continue program rollout. We have sponsorship and site selection. We have not started any of the sponsorship and site selection activities until we have clear guidance from the borough and council. The also will follow um, the guidance is contracts with the invested parties that would be artists and property owners. We would then secure materials, award designs, paint, place the ducks, and then final finalization and dedication in October 2021. That's the timeline. So in terms of budgeting and funding, we're looking at tiered local business sponsorship. We've um, gathered or garnered grants from the Visit Bucks County and, and potentially PA Council of the Arts. We will have individual fundraising um, activities, and then we will have uh, honorariums for volunteers as appropriate. So we have an advisory team that I mentioned earlier with the borough council, borough management, historical and review board, and then support team uh, to help us continue the work. So next steps, we're looking for the borough council guidance, and then we'll, we expect to continue with regular communications and reporting. And with that, I'll open up the floor for questions if I, if, uh, President Bria suggests that be the case. Sure, I think that would be appropriate now. Uh, so I guess let's begin with you know members of council. Does anyone have any questions, yeah. comments regarding uh, the presentation? And Mr. Fine, I have both, and I would like I would love to uh, to share that to share them. First, I just I mean uh, you guys are as a nonprofit doing a lot for Yardley. I just want to thank you for all of your efforts, for all of what you do. This is a really fun and exciting project. And I, I appreciate that you're coming to council and getting input and working with all the parties. There's a lot involved here and, and you all are busy people. And so I just really appreciate it. Also that you're doing something that raises morale in a creative way that honors the history of Yardley because a lot of people don't know about the ducks um, and the, the long duck history of Yardley, which is really cool actually. And you're doing that during the pandemic. And uh, we have empty storefronts and we have businesses, which of course, you know, because um, you're in those shoes that are struggling to survive. So things that bring people out and about are great. So all of that is great. And I think um, as a member of council, and I hope that I can speak for the others, we want to do everything we can to support this kind of thing. Obviously, um, you know, we have our structures, so there can't be special treatment, but I, I think we should, we should, I would, I'm happy to step out of my way to support you in any way that I can. Um, I think that the, when you ask for guidance from council, I, I think in that is um, the question of, you know, what do you need to do in terms of getting this to move forward and not having um, to be encumbered by unexpected surprises. Um, and so I did the work of what a, a private citizen um, would do, which is I scoured over the ordinances and the code to, to see from what I understand about this project, where this project would fall under um, jurisdiction of the borough's um, permitting processes, whether it's zoning or harbor or, or uh, building. And 
And I couldn't find anything. It seems to me this is basically between you, experienced Yardley, and private landowners uh, placing an object that's not a structure there. Um, so it didn't seem to me like anything falls under it. But if, if, if that's the case, then I'd like you guys to have that clarity so that you don't have to now go and get um, a lawyer and you know spend money on fees and you can just concentrate on getting this project to be successful. But if it's not the case, I'd like to hear, you know, we should try to get to some resolution on that here right now because all the parties involved that can make those decisions that are knowledgeable, probably much more than me, are, are here. And as a side note, um, I would love to, what I had to go through to find this information wasn't that easy and it was kind of interesting to be in those shoes. So Paula, at some point, um, maybe you and I can speak and if you get that information to me in a way that, I know we have an FAQ on the website, but it didn't really answer my questions. If we could present it in such a way, I'm, I'm happy to do the work to post it. Um, I think it'd be, it would help a lot of people when they're wondering, you know, can I put a, a basketball hoop in my, in, in my yard? Is that okay or not? Uh, it'd be nice to be able to have that, uh, you know, spelled out for people and probably cause less work. So that's a side note. Um, that's all I got to say for now. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Curtin, I see you've got your hand up over there. Go ahead. Yep, thank you. So I won't belabor this, um, but I want to just echo some of the comments from Councilman Finer. I have not done the same level of work that, that he did uh, into what is required or what steps we need to take, but I would also, uh, I would say, um, at least from my perspective, I want to be helpful. I, I think you, he, Yuri used the word fun. I do think this is fun. I think this is neat, right? I mean, this is kind of a neat, uh, cool thing that I think is good for branding and good for morale and um, it's fun. So I think this is something that we should all kind of get behind within the parameters of what we need to do and let's figure out what that are, uh, what those things are. Um, but again, even more broadly speaking, I think this is an opportunity because you guys are all here um, just to thank you for the time you're putting in and um, it's, it's all well intended, obviously, and you guys have pure motivation and um, pure intent with your motivation and we appreciate that and hopefully it can be helpful. Thank you, Mr. Curtin. Uh, just to address that, Mr. Curtin, I just want to say that our intention is to improve the quality of life for our residents, to use these events and place making pro projects to attract people to the area and to ultimately increase uh, economic impact for our businesses. Uh, it's part of our mission. And especially during this time period of this pandemic, which has hurt not only this area, but the whole country. And so that's why we feel strongly about uh, moving forward with our projects. Thank you. So I think to address some of those nuts and bolts questions, um, you know, some key things that we will need on our end to know are how big are the, the structures we're talking about? Um, where exactly are we looking at placing them? Right? It's certainly one thing if they are well set back onto a private lot, um, but it's going to be a different set of questions and a different conversation if they are, let's say, right up against the right of way or in the right of way, right? There's going to be a different set of standards that apply there. Um, and then the third question I have um, is how long do we anticipate these structures staying in place? Um, you know, again, so that distinction, when we say temporary, what do we mean? Oh, Liz, do you so want I'll to give start, that? Yeah, so I'll start. How big is they are five feet by four feet by two feet. So five feet is depending on how you're looking at it, but the length of the duck four feet tall and two feet wide. In other words, enough to feed 10 families. <laughs> um, um, as and far, where, I'm sorry. I'm gonna just go through the questions and then uh, and the quick answers. So the where is to be determined based on our understanding of the potential rights of way, sidewalks, those kinds of things, but that would be something that we would expect that the property owner would um, guide their expectations and then make sure that we don't have any zoning implications would be our understanding. 
And that's why we had originally talked to Wes and Paula to make sure that we understood what kinds of uh, zoning requirements there might be. And then how long is temporary? We expect a two to five year um, length of uh, time that the ducks would be um, exhibited. There's some discussion about post um, the project that we might auction. There might be some you know, other things that happen with the ducks. They might not disappear altogether. There might be another version of the duck program something along the lines of ducklings. So that's to be determined. But the, uh, the six ducks that we're talking about as the initial group is probably two to five years. And, and I would say that many um, marketing campaigns like this uh, run their course and we may find that it's only a very short term, uh, depend, you know, they have marginal you know, val uh, you know their, va their value is only as good as uh, our ability to use it for our, mar our marketing purposes for the town and to create, you know, create that excitement about visiting Yardley. So I would say that it's open-ended, but it's not uh, a long period of time. Thank you. Um, so just sort of initial reaction to, to that. Um, is that a project like this, you know, it sounds to me and certainly hear from other council members and, and from our solicitors on this, uh, but it does sound to me like this would be something I would like to see go through normal zoning and, and building checklists requirements. Um, you know, these are somewhat sizable structures. It's certainly not a building, but it's also not, you know, a, a tiny figurine, um, you know, in a two to five years, it's, temporary in the sense that it's not like building a house, but that's pretty long-term uh, in the sense that, you know, at five years, everyone on council who's here right now to make that decision uh, has ended their current term. <laughs> uh, they could still be here, but, but not on this cycle. Um, you know, again, that will probably come down to exact placement of these. Um, and to, if Mr. Closser and Mr. Griffin have anything to chime in on, on this, but I you know, think from a, a first look, we probably would need to go through some of the, the processes we have in place normally. Well, before they chime in on that, um, this, is, this is hard for me to understand um, because when I look at the definition of a structure, this does not fall under that definition. So, I, I think the questions are good for us to know, but I don't think council needs to ask. I think it's nice that we know about it, but I don't think this has anything to do with council. So when you ask those questions, what are you referring to? Because if it's not a structure, then what provision does it fall under? Yeah, I, I could probably jump in. I mean, I think at this point, it's probably premature, uh, Councilman Finer, to try to you know get into the weeds on what might apply and what might not. I think we need to get more details uh, about you know what exactly it is, um, and you know how what what the what the uh, you know what the base of it is, uh, the size of that, how it's uh, you know put into the ground, all that sort of thing. I think might be hmm. relevant. I would just encourage um, Experience Yardley to work with the borough staff, Paula and Wes, as details become more available. And then, you know, basically the issues can be assessed at that at that point in time. Mr. Uh, Klosser, we've been working with the uh, staff since December, just so you know. Okay, excellent. Yeah, uh, this is, I, um, I just want to read you. So it says structure is anything construct. I, and I, I, I'm making this point only because I really don't want to give these folks the runaround. They're busy people. And what I hear here is, well, we'll go through our processes and spend your time and money. And that's all fine if it's something that uh, falls under our ordinances. But this is what its definition of a structure is. Anything constructed or erected, having a permanent or semi-permanent location on another structure or in the ground. And then it goes on to define gazebos and buildings, and attached garages. This is a duck that you can move around. It is not attached to anything. So if that's what it is, and I'm asking the solicitor now, is that I want correct? To know. If because that's what it is, is that then correct? I don't want to be dealing with this in council. It's a waste of everyone's time and money. 
Because well, the, mu the mules and other, the mules and other, um, like, and the donkeys and stuff, they're, yeah. they're fastened to footers, concrete footers in the ground, the ones in New Hope. Obviously, yeah. when something My understanding that somebody is could these steal. are loose. These yeah, are yeah. not attached. Yeah, right? Count, I, would, I, would, I would just say, as we sit here tonight, we're not exactly sure what these are. So that's, I, I think, my comment well, is. Well, let's find out. The, well, yeah, that's that's exactly what I'm suggesting. Instead of kicking it down the road, let's find out because if we don't need, if we need to get involved, fine. But if we don't, I don't want to encumber people. You know, this is we. You know, we've got stores out of business here. Seriously, you know, we can't be bureaucratic for no reason. This is the stuff that bothers people, and I'm I'm getting a little heated right now because these are people doing good for us. So if if they don't fall under our zoning ordinances, let them go. Well, let's find out, guys. Uh, is it is this attached to the ground? No, it's uh, it, it would be attached to a concrete slab that is not attached to the ground. The concrete slab would be heavy enough to weight the uh, weight weight the uh, figurine, whatever you want to call it, David, um, down so it wouldn't you know blow over or anything. It would be completely safe. It's been done in other uh, communities. Thank you. And it's of course, we're the ground. so it's not. Mayor, it's not I'm going to I'm going to uh, go to Mayor Harding. I see you had your hand up for a minute there. Thank you. Hey, real quick, just in terms of process, is this something that's easily just put in front of a, a committee? I mean, that's why we have them, right? A community outreach committee or something like that. So, experienced yard, they can work with the committee, and then the committee can formalize it and bring it to council with a recommendation. I've been working with the economic uh, committee, and I've been. Uh, it, we've all been in communication of Yuri, who's our liaison, and we created an ad hoc committee that began in December. We've met uh, as a group a, a few times, and um, we've received a lot of encouragement from Har Harb, the Historical Association, um, and also um, uh, who, oh, from, from Paul and West. Thank you. So if it's with an official borough committee, then I think that committee brings it forward to council as an agenda. But I yeah. thought that's why we're here now. I mean, so we, I don't know what, um, if any recommendation that committee has. Um, we did invite EY here tonight to sort of present more details on this project. Um, you know, but again, I, I think until we really know what these are, um, we can't definitively say, yes, you need to follow, you know, the zoning building things or no, you don't. Well, um, Mr. Bria, um, we were advised by um, by Paula and Wes um, that they didn't, well, particularly Wes, didn't feel that it would trigger anything concerning zoning. And considering that there are objects throughout town that are not anchored, large objects, like I believe someone mentioned a basketball hoop. Um, I believe there's lending libraries or something like that. I believe that um, we may be creating a problem where there is no problem. And um, additionally, um, if we don't act on this soon, then we will not be able to fundraise further. We will not be able to move, you know, uh, continue the process of, um, uh, of uh, you, know, you know, this process of finding artists and so forth, and we'll have to cancel. And if we cancel, cancel it. Let me let me uh, approach this from a different angle. What is Experience Yardley asking of Borough Council tonight? I, I didn't. We didn't know that we were going to make a presentation, Mr. President. So we're, we weren't asking the council anything. You invited us. All right. And by way of background, um, you know, we were sent a draft memo of understanding. Um, that is what initiated this. Um, and council decided that instead of jumping over all of these other steps that could exist in the middle, that we wanted to invite you here to us tonight to tell us what the project is um, and to answer some of the questions about what exactly are we. Uh, if, if you don't mind, I'd like to right. ask if he's available for Mr. Um, uh, for, for Mr. Sacco to make a comment, if he can. Sure, let me uh, first acknowledge Mr. Foraker, whose hand has been up, and then we can go to Mr. Sacco. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Um, I, I think Mr. Applebaum 
um, couldn't understand something in one of our discussions. I never said there was no zoning implications because uh, we did discuss uh, concerns with uh, setbacks, which would obviously be a zoning concern. Um, these ducks weigh over 100 pounds. So there is a concern that they have to be footed. Um, now, whether how the footing is constructed, um, I'm still not clear on. So I just wanted to, to, to bring that up to everybody's attention. I, I, my comment actually, and I thank you, Wes, I appreciate it, was that we were looking I'd like to move to Russell's comment. For, for not triggering a, a need for uh, zoning uh, permits. Thank you. Thank Mr. you. Back up. You're muted, Russ. There you Can go. you hear me okay? We got you now. All right, thank you for uh, for considering this tonight and thank you for uh, having me speak on uh, Experience Charlie's behalf. I, I did, um, Council President Bray, I, I did prepare a memorandum, memorandum of understanding. Um, when uh, Experience Charlie came to me to kind of assist them with this process, or assist them with this process, we started talking about putting together contracts um, and obviously contracts with property owners. So I've kind of been looking at this not only from presenting a contract to property owners, but also as a property owner who may be interested in purchasing a duck. Um, and what I explained to them is we really can't go to a property owner without knowing what the ground rules are. Um, because again, as a property owner, I, first thing I would ask is, okay, what is my responsibility? And am I required to get a permit? Um, what are the permitting requirements? And, and that's how we got into the whole conversation. So we thought about it internally and thought, well, if we can get maybe the ground rules set um, with the borough, whether that's in terms of a memorandum of understanding, which we drafted, or a resolution, that that would then permit Experience Yardley to take the next step, which is to now go to the property owners and say, you know, here's an agreement if you're interested in fostering the duck, and here are the ground rules. Um, so I do understand the dilemma here in that this is this is quite unique. It's probably a first for the borough, um, and you know. Experience Charlie is looking for some guidance this evening and, and whether it is a, like a special permitting process. But I think from a timing standpoint, um, I think the concern is obviously with permits, there are inspections, there are fees, there are potential, not unreasonable delays, but potential delays. Um, so that they were looking for some type of guidance this evening and, um, you know, at least some type of procedure to put in place, whether that's no procedure whether that's an expedited procedure, um, and hopefully they were hoping that it was not the typical permitting procedure. So, and I would also uh, say that the memo, the memorandum that we shared with uh, the team, Paula and Wes and others, intention was to, to alleviate some concerns relative to the liability and what we expected from our partners and all of the legal aspects of the project are going to be um, managed by Experience Yardley. There's no um, understanding that the borough would have any responsibility for um, any um, care and feeding, maintenance and related liabilities. That was most of the intent of the memo also. And there is no cost to taxpayers at all. We're paying for it. Mm -hmm. So in the interest of maybe, uh, I don't know if, uh, it sounds to me like there's a fear of giving a go ahead. There's some sort of uh, a fear of that. Um, and so I'm gonna ask a question differently. The question I'm gonna ask is if I wanna put something on my lawn and it is a two by five by, by four foot thing, it's not attached to the ground, much like a, a basketball hoop, one of those you know movable hoops, or uh, an Adirondack chair, or a bird bath. All these things I see all over the place, uh, or a duck. Can anyone here tell me that that's going to? It's not. It's not in the ground, and it's not attached to my house. Can anyone here tell me that I'm going to need a building permit, a zoning permit? or HARB approval or any other permit from the borough, or can I just go ahead and do that like my neighbors do? And again, I think it depends on what 
we are talking about it. And no, I mean, it doesn't, it doesn't depend on it. It, it. it depends on what the definition of structure is because it says anything constructed or erected having a permanent or semi-permanent location you on another structure in the ground. I, I want to know, no, because they're all over the place. There's stuff all over the place. And, and we're talking just about like they should not have special someone. rules applied to them, there should not be special, they, the same rules that apply to everyone else should apply to them. And if this is not the borough's business, we should step out of the way and let them do it. If they breach one of the things that are a nexus that makes it the borough's business, then absolutely. But if not, why are we giving this a hard time? Mr. Finer, are you ready to listen to my response to that question? Absolutely, as long as it's not kicking the can down the road, because I'm not going to listen to It's that. not kicking the can down the road. Thank you. It's simply to say that with any structure like this, I would never, and I don't think council could ever issue a blanket statement that says you don't need to look at the permitting process, right? If we're talking about a structure, a basketball net that's going to go in somebody's driveway, that's very different from something that is going to lean up over the sidewalk or the right of no, it does not lean against the sidewalk, does not lean on the right of way, does not go on borough property. It is if it's something is entirely within my property and I want to put something on my property that's not attached to anything. Why does that require is is there any is there any way where that would require a permit? That's my question. We have we have a solicitor. I'm not asking you, uh, Mr. Bree. I just we have the because if I they ask can a clarifying hear that, question. Can I ask sure. a clarifying question? I thought that the first one was going in, was proposed to go in front of Borough Hall, directly in front of Borough Hall. If that's the case, council would obviously have to vote on that if that would be the case. That's what I thought but that's I, why we I'm were- I'm talking about private, uh, private agreements between them and property owners that have nothing to do with the borough. That's what I'm saying. Why are we getting involved in stuff that's not our, why are we wasting taxpayer money on stuff that is not under our jurisdiction? That's my question. The proof that I saw it was directly in front of Borough Hall. No, yeah, they're here. No, we 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 discussed uh, many locations, but nothing was decided upon. And so, if you got that impression, that was a uh, not not correct. Um, we have not made any decision because we haven't been able to speak to anyone because we haven't been able to move this forward. That's all. But no, it's it's not specifically. Uh, in front of the council. Uh, it may have been brought up in, in uh, conversation, but no decision of any sort has been made. Thank you, Ms. Apple. I had a question. Did either Experience Yardley or anyone from the borough check with the other um, municipalities that have done similar things, whether it's New Hope or Pennington, to see you know, how you can expedite this and make it less bureaucratic? Because certainly it's a good thing for the community. We want to help this and not you know, how this group incurs so much cost and um, bureaucracy in doing so. So is, is that something that, has anyone talked from either Experience Yardley or the borough yet of, you know, how these other um, townships were able to uh, accomplish this? We have not directly discussed this with any other uh, municipality, but we have um, done research and we have spoken to uh, the manufacturer and and others about their experiences. Um, I it was my intention, and I still it is still my intention to uh, remember we're uh, uh, we work full time and um, there's, we have a limited amount of time to do some of these things. So I apologize, but I would like to get uh, to do that. But that doesn't take away from what we're trying to accomplish here, um, because other municipalities have their own rules and I, I don't think we can compare it to uh, our own municipality. But the zoning is probably similar in a lot of these areas, I would assume, but. Thanks, it's certainly worth looking at. Um, sometimes we find that other areas have come up with good models for things like this. And, and you know, I just wanna be clear too, I don't think anyone here is saying no, I want this project to die in bureaucracy. I think what we're saying is we can't issue a blanket statement that says you're good to go, right? We just need more info before we get to, to anything of that nature. Well, so can Michael, you describe you, the You process? have a lot of info. These people have been working with you for months. 
So, you know, I, you know I, I need to respond to that because these people, I've been on, I've been working on this. I've been, I've, I don't have a lot of time available. I've been working on this. These people have spent months working on this. They have presented us with an incredibly detailed, well thought through plan and they're coming for help. And so, we need to see more is not an acceptable answer at this stage. We need to give them more than that. So I would like to say that we have included Susan Taylor, who has her hand raised as one of the uh, experts that we are using, who has had familiar familiarity with the mules along the canal, and also did, did some work, if I, I remember correctly, with the Titusville um, cow group. So we might want to hear from Susan, who's raised her hand. Sure. Um all right, let's, I was gonna to move to more members of the public. I did see Ms. Perlmutter's oh. hand a while ago, so I will move to her first, followed by Ms. Taylor. Um, thanks, I'll make it real quick. I just wanted to say that um, I have a sculpture garden and I have life-size bronze sculptures all around my house, on my property, um, that I think some do weigh 100 pounds or more. And um, I kind of would think of these ducks in the category of sculptures. Um, so in terms of having them on a property, I just, no, I hope, I'm not opening myself up for needing permits, but um, I do have um, a, a lot of them and they, you know, they're, they're not, they're heavy, they're, they don't fall over. And I just wanted to say that I think it's in the category of a sculpture. Thank you. And now Ms. Taylor. Um, no, I did not have anything to do with oxen in Titusville. I <laughs> was involved with the Miles of Mules project that was sponsored by the Delaware and Lehigh National Heritage Corridor. Um, there were two mules placed in Yardley Borough, one in front of Borough Hall and one by Charcoal Stakes, which I think that one may be there. I don't recall at that time anyone going into any intense deliberations over zoning. It can be rather simple. Um, is what's happening uh, creating any public safety issue? The properly set back from the sidewalk, from the street. Um, I do know that the committee has gone to the borough and presented a lot of information. So it's a little disconcerting tonight to have, you know, oh, we don't know anything about this because I don't think that the, the committee has been trying to do a very proper job in being forthright. Um, in order to make this project happen, Fundraising has to be, has to take place. And the longer that this is debated and goes around in a circle, the harder that fundraising becomes. When, to make a project like this happen, people have to be enthusiastic. Yes, we wanna do this. Let's make it happen. And I'm, I'm not getting that impression. Caroline, I think, Everyone sort of hopes that one will be in front of Borough Hall as an emblem of Yardley. David's right, no one's made any firm decision, but it would be the hope that everyone in Borough Council is really excited about this and would think it'd be fun to have something in front of Borough Hall. So somehow or other, the circling needs to come together and a way forward has to happen. I think the committee, in my opinion, has presented a whole lot of information um, from which you can um, lend some guidance and um, a direction. Are there any further comments from the public on the issue? I'd seen none. Um, you know, I I do want to highlight that I think there's been some sort of breakdown in communication here. Um, 
while this was going on, I was checking my emails to see when this first came across my desk. Uh, and that was at the end of January, right? It is now mid-February. So on one hand, I'm getting the impression that this has been going on for a long time. On the other, it hasn't been in front of me for at least that long. I can't speak for the other council members, um, but I think that's where some of this might be coming from, which is, you know, two, three weeks ago, get this memo that's essentially asking for a waiving of the permitting process, um, but not many structural details contained along with that MOU. So that's not to say that it's not something that we as council could get behind and support. It's just to say that before we, at least in my opinion, I'm speaking personally, right, before I could get behind something that says we're going to waive these requirements, I need to see a little bit more. David, that's, a, that's not a good depiction. Excuse me. Excuse me. I'm speaking. If you wish to be acknowledged, please use the raise hand function. The rules of the meeting have not changed. I understand the rules and I apologize. I you if you are interjecting. <laughs> I said I apologize, didn't I? Thank you. None of this is to say that that information that I am seeking does not exist. It is just to say that I don't have it in front of me at this time. That may be the case for other council members as well. All of that being set aside, um, you know, if council is to take action tonight, we need to be asked for something specific. And I at least still need some clarity on what exactly that is. I, I can, may I make a comment? Yes, Mr. Applebaum, you have the floor. Thank you. So uh, first of all, um, I'm to take a deep breath and to understand that as we've all said, this is a fun thing. This is an organization that brings notoriety to our community. This is a, a, a an organization that brings um, you know, good feelings to a community that's suffering during a pandemic and in during normal times brings, um, you know, uh, uh, you know, people to uh, visit and uh, support our businesses. And that's what this is all about fun um, and bringing uh, something good to the community and building economic impact. So with that said, I want to make sure that you know that in no way, shape or form uh, do we want to be adversarial. And I'm sorry that it devolved into this because not, not really where we wanted to go. Number two, uh, the depiction that we have only brought this to council's attention since January is false because your own uh, staff have been in meetings since de December with us. So I just wanted to make that clear. So I'm not sure why you would not know that Paula and Wes were in these meetings and Uri as our liaison, as part of council, that, that just really doesn't gel with me. But that being said, um, if we don't want to get to the point where this becomes a burden to you and the council and to us as a, uh, an organization, again, it goes back to doing the good things for our good people. And if we can't do it in an efficient way, and it's going to trigger, uh, um, uh, you know, a, a lot of lot more discussion and costs. Then we may not be able to do it. This project at this time that is not a threat. That is simply just a matter of fact. And maybe this is not the project for now. I don't know. I just want to make sure you understand that there's no reason why uh, we 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 don't have to get hot about this because it's just not worth it. We're friends. We're neighbors and we're working together to make Yardley a better place to live and visit and spend some money with our businesses. And that's it. So thank you for that. I appreciate it. Thank you, uh, Mr. Curtin and then Mr. Ross. Okay, uh, thank you. I'm just gonna sort of propose a path forward just for the sake of discussion. Um, Look, in my mind, right, everyone's here with good intentions. And I, I believe that, right? We're Burl's, you know, and, and people of council that have spoken and are, are trying to follow an appropriate procedure to avoid problems later. You guys are obviously trying to do something good for the community, which everyone has, I think, consistently acknowledged unanimously, right? So my thought process is this, right? 
like anytime you're doing something in the borough as a homeowner, right? Back to Council Finer's point where he initially made his comments, right? You can act on your own and make your own determination of whether or not you need zoning or variances, et cetera, but you run the risk of finding out you did after the fact, right? So the best practice is if there's any ambiguity, right? Work with borough staff, right? The more information you give them, the easier it is for them to determine. I think what we owe you though is once we've done that and maybe there's a little more information that you can provide and, and I'm happy to get involved with Councilman Fire to help with this or, or however. Um, I don't know that you're ever gonna get like a perfect answer until it's completely done, right? We all take like some risk in doing these things but I think the spirit is we'll all kind of work together. But I think if we could answer maybe a few more things around the structure or maybe summarize everything you know more concisely for Wes and Paula right I would say maybe it's on us a little bit to tell you here are the things that we here are the reasons why we think it has to go through these processes rather than it just has to go through these processes right because I know when I've done renovations on my home when I lived on South Main Street when we've done some work here we've asked the question and we've been told because of these reasons you need to go get these types of approvals. And I think what you're looking for is not you have to go, but some more clarity of why do I have to go? Because maybe I could change some of the things to make it so that I don't have to in order to streamline this. And maybe that's a way we can move this forward more quickly and I'll let anybody respond to that. But at least that's the analogy that jumped in my head was that we deal with this as homeowners and residents. Maybe there's a way to sort of think about it in that context. Thank you. Very good suggestion. Uh, Mr. Ross, then Ms. Thompson. All right. Um, my kind of feeling is that I feel like the issue why we're getting kind of contentious and going back and forth and we don't really have a clear, decisive answer is um, we kind of need to, to know a little bit more. I feel like the easiest starting point would be to find out the locations of where the ducks are going to be and then kind of like some sort of detailed drawing or description of the physical duck and the mounting technique or how it's going to go and then we could take it from there because then we have a clear decise this is what it's going to be where I kind of went into it kind of thinking like are, are they just asking for like a blanket approval like council is going to say yeah we love this and you can just do it where we can't really determine where the duck is going to be or what it's going to look like and the whole bureaucracy of it is we kind of have to know the specific details we need to know the who what where when and why before we can actually give a concise answer um going forward just with anything municipal related so maybe if we can get a where the ducks are going and then a description of the ducks then it's an easy kind of question to ask borough manager and borough staff like this is what we want to do do we need a permit for this and then they can see the clear concise this is what's going to be done and they can answer it you might need a permit, you might need this, you might need that, but at least then they'll know instead of being, we want to do this, but we're not sure where. It's, it's a very hard kind of kind of question to tackle with uh, anything government related. You, Ms. Thompson. So I, I do love this idea. Um, I'm sorry that I didn't say that. I thank everyone for all of the work that went into it. Um, I, I know if they're installed, my toddler will make me go and see them every single day. Um, but I came to this meeting with the impression that the first one was going to be installed post haste in front of Borough Hall. And I had to ask myself, um, how would we treat ourselves as a borough? What would we require ourselves as property owners to do to install th this thing? How do we define temporary? I don't consider five years to be temporary. And what do we define as a structure? You know, if it's something that can't be picked up and moved by without a forklift. Um, these are questions that we had. We talked about it with the solicitors before this call that we did not consider the memorandum of understanding to be something acceptable for the borough to, to um, sign. And in place of that, we thought that uh, zoning would be the appropriate place to send this. I mean, who, who else to answer those questions that I just posed? What do we define as temporary and what do we define as a structure? Um, you know, council shouldn't be the people who are making, making, you know, arbitrary rulings on those definitions. So 
I love this, but we I want to be able to apply the same process to council if we're going to put it on borough property um, as we would to residents. And we have to figure out what that process is. We can't treat everyone differently. It's going to make us all crazy. So we need to, this needs to be good and orderly. Um, and I think the donators will appreciate that as well. Thank you. Thank you. And I uh, see Stasis has her hand up. Thanks, Caroline. That was really clear. Um, I, I'd like I just to back uh, um, piggyback on what uh, Matthew Ross was saying, and I think uh, I forget who, oh, Matt Curtin. Um, I think uh, first of all, uh, for Matthew, um, we can't give you an exact location because for each duck because the the way we have it figured, the um, the um, fundraising process is that people are going to uh, property owners are going to basically bid on fostering a duck. We're calling it fostering a duck. So depending on who bids on it, that's, you know, either it's going to go on their property or they're going to bid on a duck and they're going to put it on somebody else's property, like potentially Borough Hall or some other public space. So up front, we can't tell you exactly where they're going to go. However, I do think that um, what's clear is that um, if, if we could get sort of a, a set of exact questions that you guys need to have answered. Um, and I think it behooves us to get more very specific information for you regarding installation, for instance. Um, we can certainly supply you with uh, sketches and schematics of what these things are gonna look, what the outline looks like. Of course, artists are gonna be uh, decorating these, so we don't know what the finished product is going to look like, but we can get you that information. Um, I think we need to, it would help us for, for us to know exactly what information you need so we can go forward. Because we're interested in all doing this, to, you know, we, we came to you because we wanna do it in concert with you. We want to, you know, do this in cooperation with Borough Council. Thank you, and Mr. Steiner. I, yeah, I have an idea. So I'm just thinking about, you know, what's the win for everyone? Because I think we all want this. We just want to do it in a way that meets all the everyone's needs here. And, and here's a thought, maybe out of the box. If the borough said, okay, why don't we do the first duck? I like what Susan Taylor said. Why don't we do the first duck in Borough Hall? And if we could agree to that tonight, uh, I would say the borough would be responsible for the fees of zoning, et cetera, which since they would go back to the borough, kind of makes, kind of works out. And I would ask if Experience Yardley could figure out how to pay for the duck so that um, the first one went through here as a model for what other ones could be, because I think they have to, it's like one-to-one. -one. They have to talk to each business owner. But if there's one duck and it's an example and it's right here, then even if they don't even put it in yet, but there's just the process is approved for it to be at Borough Hall with the intention that it will eventually be here once the money is raised or whatever, then um, maybe, you know, kind of everyone's needs get met. All right, we will think about that while we hear from Mr. McCann. <laughs> yeah, and I guess I just want to revisit um, Councilman Feiner's question and another point raised. Like, do we have an answer to that? If someone, a hundred pound statue, would you really need zoning for that? Um, it, it's, you know, if we know the weight, we know it's basically four foot by five foot. I feel like this is something that is common um, throughout, like, can't we have a quick answer to that, whether to solicit or whatever, or our zoning officer? I mean, that's something that seems pretty standard throughout the borough and um, it could really help move this along. Yeah, Councilman Ken, I think most likely the answer is no, but you, you can't say no without having the specifics. Mm -hmm. So you can't know for sure. So if they, they just have, did they it, have a size and a weight. If they did it, 
if, if they did it without asking, if they put a statue, you know, a duck, whatever, without asking, we would then do what? We would go to them and say, hey, you, you put this up without getting approval. But then we would look and we say, well, it's not this, it's not that. We would look at certain criteria to determine if they actually violated a permit or they didn't. That's, so the question, what, I guess, is, well, could we, could we determine that before they actually do it? Well, that's what the code officer is for, yes, and the staff. Hmm. But can they do that before by just looking at it without having, having to go through permitting. I mean, I had this happen with a landscaping thing. I had like a landscaping change and I went and paid for the permit. And then I was told, oh, actually it's just a landscaping. You don't actually need that. But I still had to pay for the permit because <laughs> I used the time. Uh, so I understand, you know, it's like a uh, um, chicken or egg problem. Mm. Mm. Is or you raised a scenario for us. Isn't a, a duck being offered to us? I thought that the adopting entities had to purchase the duck. And I, I'm throwing out an idea. Maybe money could be raised. That to raise money, maybe we have people here today. Everyone ship in, you know, 10, 20 bucks. That's already, you know, a couple hundred bucks. Uh, I don't know how much the ducks cost, but I mean, you know, I'm sure there are people that would love to sponsor a duck for Borough Hall. Just okay, saying. so so this is Liz. It it occurs to me that there's uh, continues to be some um, confusion about how the program works. Multiple sponsors, the concept of fostering, meaning multiple levels of sponsor. Sponsor could uh, could pay for an uh, the entire program, for example, or portions of of ducks. The fostering would be property owners, could be other people who want to sponsor a uh, or foster with a, a co-foster parent. There's multiple um, iterations of how this could work. The idea behind the flexibility is that we have um, community involvement and engagement so that it's not one person's duck, it's all our ducks. So perhaps what, as Cindy said, perhaps what we need to do is have um, some clarity on what we're thinking the program will be, how it will run, and what kinds of things you need to know to help make a decision. And the decision being, can we go forward or not? That's really the question here is, is this program something that, that the borough wants or not? And we'll be glad to answer questions, is my point. All right. I think we have probably talked about every angle of this. Um, you know, in summary, I, again, as we get into the details of these discussions, it's easy to lose sight of the fact that I think everybody on this call wants to get to yes on this. Um, you know, we saw the issue come before council because there is a proposed MOU. Um, but as we've alluded to, more than likely, right, these things probably won't need permits. We can't say that for sure, um, but that sounds like the case. And we've heard the examples of sculptures on lawns, basketball mats, right, obviously those sorts of things generally don't. So this generally won't either. Um, but, you know, as with all things, we can't absolutely say that until we really know what's being put in. Um, you know, so I think a good way to go about this is if there's a specific plan for one, to bring that to the borough staff, um, take a look at it, say, you know, is this something we're gonna need permits for? Um, certainly council could on a case-by-case -case basis with things like this, show support by waiving fees. Um, you know, that would be something we would have to discuss, but I don't see any reason why we couldn't do that for a program like this that is going to benefit our community. Um, but short of that, um, you know, I'm not really sure where else we go from here tonight, unless there's a very specific outcome that EY is looking for. Yes, Ms. Stott says. So if, if I mean, what comes to mind is if you could just put together uh, a list of very specific questions that you need answered, that we could come back to you within 
a week, perhaps, a couple of days. Yes. Um, we can certainly do that. Um, so Manager Johnson, West Four Acre Code Enforcement uh, can certainly get together those specific things they would need to know to make a judgment on this. And then we can just have for council a written statement from all the professionals involved, no permit necessary if that's the determination and then we can close the door on this. I would just ask that the um, those any, if it, if it is found that it's necessary, I would like to know, I guess in either case, the grounds for why or why not. Nice. Where, it, where it pertains to the code, because if I can't find that from the code and I'm on council, good luck to anyone else. I can I just talk one second, David? Yes, go ahead. If this is going to be on borough property, I would want somebody's eyes on it to make sure Caroline's toddler isn't going to climb on it. It's not going to fall on them. So I would think that I would want a professional to look at the way it's fastened to the base to make sure something's not going to happen. We want to make sure that if it's also on somebody's property that we're not looking at setbacks, but we're looking at sight lines to make sure when people are pulling out of their driveways, they're gonna be able to see around the duck that the duck's not gonna be blocking them. So I think, I think individually they can come in and if need be ask for a waiver of the permits, but I still think we need a professional to look at it to make sure it's not gonna fall. These are big, these are good sized ducks. If you go down to the corner of what is it, um, Pennsylvania Avenue and Trenton Avenue, if you're going to Marsville, there's a huge dog there. I kind of anticipate that's what our ducks are going to be like. So if you can just imagine kids, not only kids, adults, teenagers climbing on these things and something falls on somebody, you just got to, I want to make sure the borough is covered. So I think we need a professional to look at it to make sure everything is happy Set, um, site line wise and building wise. Well put. Um, all right, I see Miss Taylor's hand. And then after that, I think we are probably getting near the end here. So Susan, go ahead. Okay. Um, I very much agree with Paula, the borough's consideration and this should be public safety. As I said earlier, um, if the borough's position at this point in time is we can't make decisions because we have to know exactly where we are, I think we are at a stalemate because the ducks are not inexpensive, contributors need to be found, and the committee doesn't know where the ducks will be at this point in time because we don't know who might be contributing toward the ducks. So somehow we need to get past that, oh, where is it exactly going to be and come to a more generalized decision. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and I do th think much of that can be addressed um, you know, and those more specific questions that UI will be working with our borough manager and our code enforcement officer to work on. Um, you know, and certainly through that process, we can flag things to be aware of, um, you know, setbacks, traffic sight lines, that sort of thing. Um, you know, I think we can reach some general guidelines about those concerns. So are we committing to doing that then and providing them with the guidelines for where we would like them to be I just want to make sure we're clear because I'm not really clear what we're committing to right now. So we're committing to having more detailed follow-up discussions between Wes, Paula, and Experience Yardley. Uh, I think it could probably be done in one call or, or maybe, you know, a couple emails. I don't think it needs to be, you know, a very prolonged back and forth. Um, but where the borough sort of raises its specific concerns and then Experience Yardley has the opportunity to address those. Uh, and I'm hopeful through that process, right? We might not be able to say it's going to go exactly in front of this building, um, but we can probably give a general idea 
that putting it all the way out on the corner of an intersection that's already difficult to see around is going to cause some issues, right? And I don't think that's what, what you're saying, you know, it's going to go there. Um, but I just want to make sure that we have an opportunity for our professionals to address the specific concerns that they have um, and work with EY so that there are no surprises when we go to build these things. Yes, Mr. Applebaum. Um, I, thinking back to some of the comments that were made, um, was there a precedence already set when, uh, say, the charcoal or other people have these things? And is that something we need to look at to help get this through since it's already been done? And I guess the solicitor would know best because I don't, I'm not a lawyer. <laughs> I'm just a duck lover. I didn't understand your question, David. What well, I guess I'm asking if there was a precedent set from these other uh, uh, art pieces that had been already installed. And does that contribute to our case to kind of push this? I, I'm sorry, I don't mean push it through, but to yeah. make it an easier um, process to well, get through. I mean, I suppose to, to the extent that they're, you know, similar in, in style, size and attachment and all of that and location, it, it probably would help. Yeah. Yeah. I, I just wanted to mention it in passing. Thank you very much. And I'm going to thank everyone. Um, it's just ducks. <laughs> thank you. All right. Anything further on this topic? All right. Hearing and seeing none. Uh, that concludes our scheduled agenda items for this evening. So unless a member of council has something else they'd like to raise, I'll ask for a motion to adjourn. Motion. Motion. Oh, second. All right, I heard a motion and several seconds. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Thank you, everyone. Have a good evening. Good night, everyone. Good night.